My name is Brent Seals. I am professor of computer science and chair of the computer science department here at the University of Kentucky. What do you do if you want to make a library but it's not something that's digital? Well, so you digitize it and things that are damaged are really hard to digitize. So that's what got me going. And what I found out is that there's an entire world of things in the library that have text that's basically invisible. And I wanted to be able to make it visible. So how do you make the invisible library visible? That's what I do. In terms of the technology, it seems a little bit magical because we're, we're reading something without opening it at all, right? So putting all that together, what we're able to do is create a map of the inside of something that's very, very detailed, right? And that can be processed with the computer to be opened up virtually. We find every layer that has writing on it, and we pull that flat, just as if we were uh, wrinkling it out, you know, ironing out the wrinkles, but we're doing it all digitally. And, you know, when you see that step by step, it, it looks kind of, you know, mysterious and um, kind of impossible. And so that's captured people's imaginations. This scroll was really interesting because it had been discovered in 1970 um, in the town of En Gedi, which is right on the Dead Sea, on the western shore of the Dead Sea in Israel. But it was so badly damaged in its discovery that there wasn't anything that could really be done in terms of reading it. It was written on animal skin. Uh, it was discovered in the floor of a synagogue inside what was identified by the archaeologists to be the Holy Ark. So it was likely a Torah scroll, but difficult to prove. When we did the scanning and unwrapped digitally what was inside, we found that um, the scroll is actually uh, the first two chapters of Leviticus. So it's biblical and it's written in Hebrew. So it turns out that this is one of the earliest exact matches to the canonical or Masoretic text that you would have in your Bible now. And it is an exact match. Um, the carbon dating of this scroll takes it back to about the second century. And the paleography, which is the analysis of what the handwriting looks like, takes it back even a little bit earlier to maybe the first century. There's this signature collection. Um, it's iconic. It's uh, called the, the Herculaneum Scrolls, uh, discovered 250 years ago in the Bay of Naples. This is the only library that's ever been discovered from the classical period in place. Every other library was sacked or burned, and this one was still there because it was covered up by a volcanic explosion. Vesuvius in AD 79 covered up the uh, library, and 250 years ago the scrolls that were in the library were discovered, but they're all badly damaged. But I do think that there is a chance that there could be Christian material in there. There are 300 scrolls remain intact and unread, and this technology could be the way to actually open them up. Paul, on his last missionary journey, actually stopped in the Bay of Naples and stayed for a week. And the verse says that he visited there with believers. So I know that they had writings. They had early Christian writings. And that was literally 10 miles away from where this library was. So, you know, it's really intriguing for me to, you know, to read that text and to realize all these people, you know, that we read about in our Bible, right, were in that area when that happened. So could it be possible that there's an early Christian manuscript? Absolutely. Do we know that that to be true? Not yet. But this technology could be the thing that could reveal something. And I don't really have a fear that, you know, we're going to discover something that's radically outside of what we know. In fact, I have an enthusiasm to be able to use the technology to be able to continue to confirm, you know, what we've believed and what we know to be true. When it became time for me to find my calling, um, the natural thing would be to gravitate toward missions, but I just realized that my calling was in computing, my calling was going to be in the university. But what I've found through my work is that I've still had many, many opportunities to you know, see my faith and my work come together, and this is the latest one. I do believe in calling, and um, you know, not each of us are wired the same way. So. What you do is you find out what your calling is and you live that out and then you let God do the rest. God will bring you to the place where you're with the people you should be with, your talents are doing the things for you that you ought to be doing. And um, these are the kinds of things that happen when you do that.